Okay, so say Ronald. Hi. Uh, so I think uh, we need the research to come to the conclusion. Right? We 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 can't we can't uh, make a decision without any research before. So I think that's okay. why research is important. Okay. Good. It's a, it's, it's a good answer there. Um, uh, need to meet me. Uh, need, uh, sorry, is it Yes, it's Neil Mini. Neil Mini, okay. What do you think? Why do we do research? Why is research so important? I think research is important, like when I'm considering, when I come across a problem to get a solution to it, I should uh, need some like background on it and the research on it where, to get a proper solution. It, so that is my answer. Okay, all right, good. So research is very important, students. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask a few of you because without research, we will not be able to advance. We will not be able to advance in our, in our studies. Um, if I look at, uh, let me use economics, for instance. Uh, we had a guy called Adam Smith many, 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 many years ago. Adam Smith came and he said, okay, in economics, we need a supply and demand. And if there's a supply and people have a demand, the two will meet and will be in equilibrium. And um, if there's a change in the supply, uh, the demand will change later on. And eventually, we will have this invisible hand where everything comes back into balance or in, in equilibrium. That was many, many years ago. Okay? And without research, that will be the norm. That will be like the the law of economics and everybody will say, okay, this is how it works. But due to research and due to people doing research, they found out that there is not only a thing called microeconomics. Microeconomics, we're looking at the households and what's happening in the households. But it's not only macroeconomics, where we're looking at how countries and how cross-border countries and, and um, continents is doing business. But we came to another thing to say that, hey, if you're looking at the Maldivian people, one Maldivian person will maybe complain about the other one, but if, they, if there's, there's a trouble, they will stand together as one. The same with Sri Lanka, the same with, with any other country. So there is something more than micro and macroeconomics. I'm bringing it back to what we're having nowadays. Is we have, and, and, and I'm talking economics and talking theory, I'm not talking politics, but in, uh, we have a problem now with America and China. Where America say China, you are bad. China say America, you are bad. You are bullying us, and the two of them are fighting. And with that, it creates a problem with other within other Southeast Asian countries. And with that, we have a big problem. So now, can we say only Southeast Asian country? You have money, and the other ones no. So microeconomics doesn't work now. Macroeconomics doesn't work. But people will follow now what is in their heart. And that kind of created, through the research, something else we call um, behavioral economics, where the way people behave creates a different way of, uh, of people thinking now of why they buy. I buy now a, a, a cell phone, not because I have more money or less of money in my pocket, but because my friends tell me this is a better cell phone, and this cell phone um, will create for you um, the feeling that we are friends. I actually did buy another phone two days ago because my phone, phone had a problem and I wanted to buy a phone. I bought it. Crappiest phone you can find is a Vivo. But I bought it because my grandson, he has a Vivo phone. He's five years old. He said, Grandpa, Vivo is a good phone. I bought a Vivo phone. Not because of demand and supply, but because of now something else, the behavior of feeling I join with something. If there was not research done on this, it would have been a problem. And that happened to any other discipline out there, from medicine all the way through to, te to, to, to technology, to industrial revolution, to everything that we're doing, research play a role. Back in the workplace, is exactly the same. Where the, this guy was picking up a big box and said, eh, this box is, I carry this box, I'm tired every day, I have to carry this box all the time. So, what can I do? Oh, the, another guy came and did research and he found it. Oh, if I put a conveyor belt, you don't have to carry the box. You put a box on here and I push it and it will run over. So that was the research done. 
So then after a while, somebody did research and said, hey, but why do we need that guy who complained or the guy who had to put it onto the, to the conveyor belt? Why don't we go and we create a robot that's doing everything for us? And that is how research is done in every piece and part of our life. You did it. Why do you study a, a, a degree in LIBT? Because you did research. It's not because, ah, let me throw my thumb in the, uh, in the, in the sky or I take a dart, close my eyes and throw it in a, in a lot of names and find which one pop up. That's the one I'm going to study at. No. You guys did research. You find London Institute of Business and Technology as, as, a, as a course that is meant for me. I feel at home in this course. So on a small scale, you also did research. So by doing research, and you know, my first page when I got here, it said, the first thing we have to do, we have to stimulate the reader's interest. If you do research, and you do research on uh, how can I time travel in tying a knot, and you go in there and you write all the mathematical equations and algebra that is in the knot tying, how you can travel in time by tying a knot, who's going to read it? So very few academics who was, will be really interested maybe in algebra or a few whose far faces it up. I want to go through a knot to time travel. They are actually, they are going to read it. So they, not a lot of people will be stimulated and the interest will not be stimulated. If actually one of my friends wrote a paper, he's a, G a Russian guy, and proving that in a not tired knot, you can actually time travel. But so eventually, what is your paper for? What are you going to, who do you want to stimulate? And who are you going to look at in, in the interest and whose interest do you want to catch in this paper? My wife just completed a paper in um, um, Alzheimer's disease. How to prevent Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease, everybody says, oh, Alzheimer's disease is so bad. Drink a pill. The pill doesn't work. Oh, let's do this. Now, so my wife said, oh, I want to bring something else in. Let me research how to go and meditate and do meditation to find out if that can be a cure for, re for, for Alzheimer's disease. And writing that paper, she had all over the world people want to read it. And that is the stimulation of the reader. The next thing is, the working title that I said to you, what the research title is meant to do, but a working title. If I say the phenomenon of the XYZ theory, who's going to read it? I don't think I will even want to read it. But if I have a title and I have a title that attract attention, that is when we do, and I'm going to come back to title and how important is title and how important is introduction. And I'm going to, uh, that is what I'm going to read. If I go to Google Scholar and I do research on something and I want to read something, I said, oh, the ones that are popping out, that is the ones that's going to, uh, number three, attract me to inform me what I want to read about. I just bought a, a small uh, 20 uh, rai in Thailand. It's, oh, I don't even know, it's maybe it's five hectare place for a, a farm for my boy. Because I thought for part time and to, to keep myself busy, we want to go into hydroponic farming and in organic farming. And by knowing nothing, we had to do research. And what do I research? I'm researching and I'm going onto YouTube and I'm going onto papers and I'm looking at titles that will draw my attention. Most probably that's the guys who were clever enough to make a good title and the information is not, it's not really very important. It's, a, it's general information. But that attracts me first before I'm looking at something more deeper. So that is the importance of a title of your, of your research paper. But the title must be very accurate as well. So when you do a research paper, and that even includes within your workplace students. If you have a problem with something that is wrong and you want to write something for your manager or if you are the manager for the, for the board of directors to, to catch your attention, it must be accurate. You can't go and, and guess. Guessing does not work. Guessing is the same as reading Wikipedia, where many of the information on Wikipedia, anybody can write nonsense on Wikipedia and the people will accept it as, as if it is the truth. So that is not accurate. So when you, when you look at work and we're looking at, uh, at research and you're looking at you want to write yourself, it's not, I think it is like this or I think it's like that, 
but you must be accurate in whatever you're doing because that is how people is going to base and, and look at you also of how good you are in your workplace um, something on, on, on the sideline is that if you come and you and I speak and I speak good and I speak very proper and I speak with di di dynamite and I'm going on like this people say wow you are a good leader when I write something people say you are either intelligent or you are a donkey it's very interesting I wrote a book not long ago and uh, I made one spelling mistake in the book and my students came to me and said hey professor look there there's a spelling mistake you are not as clever as we thought you are they did not care the rest of the material that was a spelling mistake so that is important for the accuracy of your paper um, come here and I'm jumping again but when I say if you write your paper you write it in, in, in a language um, I don't know how many of you is English as a first language maybe most probably a second language or or, a, or a, a third language make sure that you write good English it's very important because um, if you if you if I talk to you and I make a mistake people can overhear but when you read it and you see that spelling mistake they said key and the second spelling mistake oh my god third spelling mistake this guy's an idiot even if you did all the work so make sure that your work is accurate and and must stand out to explain the issue um, it's like what I try to do to you guys now. I'll try to explain to you how important is the is research, how important is the research title. If, if, if it doesn't stand out, if, I don't, if you don't believe in it, don't do it. But research, as I say, research is important not only for you for study, but also your workplace. Do it because you start and you are interested in it from your heart, not from your brain. Because if I have to write from my brain, I have to talk from my brain, I'm going to say, oh my God, we have three hours class in the two hours class tonight. Oh my goodness, I don't even know how I'm going to get through 15 minutes. If you don't believe in what you are doing, leave it. Till you believe in something that that seed grow up and grow into you. And that must be how it stand out and how you explain the issue because you believe in it. it um, Today I, I, I cook something for me and my boy, and I believe ah this is quite going to be nice food. This is stupid food. This is egg and, and tomato. And then my boy was like, "Wow, I'm going to eat it slowly." I said, "Why?" He said, "Because it's so delicious. I don't want to eat it fast." I'm not a cook, but I enjoyed what I was doing, and that is the same when you write. Is enjoy what you guys are doing, and that is important. The very important part of research. If you don't enjoy it, it's going to be a paper that is gibberish and nobody's going to be interested in what you are doing. Okay? Right, so that is about the research title. We're going to come back a little bit later on it. Where do we get our title and what's the title all about? Let me go to the next slide. I'm slowly, okay? Then the next part you're going to have in your paper is called the abstract and the keywords. An abstract is not a summary. An abstract is taking a big paper like that, compressed it to something small. To take something small that me as a researcher would read through it and say, wow, I want to go now into the detail, into the meaty part of this research, but your abstract is telling me exactly this is what I'm looking for. It's like taking a truck or a, actually a 16-ton truck full of coal, uh, black coal, and you compress it and you get one or two diamonds. That's actually where diamonds are coming from. But that is what your abstract must be. It must be a synopsis of everything from the beginning to the end. It must be detailed but very short. It must determine, uh, it's a determination of the length. It shows you the length of it. People don't have time to go into detail, but if I want to, ah, oh, I can find it where I found this information. That's what happened in your abstract. It has two ways you can do it. It's either informative, to tell the people what they already know is and to and to um, concentrate and to, to reaffirm what is there, or and then it must can be structured to say, but because of this, because of A, B, C, and D is happening, and that will be the result. Because of people um, not storing um, 
fertilizer very good they take fertilizer and as you as they put for plants and we just dump it in a, in a, in a warehouse um, if we do it that way what will happen we will have a, a bomb blast like what has happened in Lebanon lately in Beirut two days ago or a day ago what happened because if you do this this will happen this will happen this will happen that will happen in a in a structured um, work and then it must contain keywords Keywords mean it's about five or six words, not not two, not three, not twenty. It must be words that if you look for something and say I want to look at hydroponic farming. Let me use the one that I've used lately. And I want to look at hydroponic farming. Hydroponic farming for the students who don't know is uh, where the plants is the, the, the roots of the plants is lying in oh, is lying uh, is hanging and water flow the whole time with nutrients. And the, far, and the plant will just suck up this nutrient as it wants and it grow up into a farm and into a, a full grown semi organic food without pesticides without all this um, hormone treated food, uh, junk that is put inside and that is what it is so if i look at research for that at hydroponic farming and i go and and my keyword is vegetables <coughs> is it a good keyword no because that keyword can lead me from buying vegetables what is vegetables and what is fruit all the way to um how to use it to make a papaya salad okay a papaya salad is one of the foods they eat here in thailand but that is why so your keywords must be words that when when your paper is written and you put this keyword and and we all do it if you go to google and, ah, i want to know what where is that place you put in that keyword and google search will throw you out that uh, throw you out something about that thing that is what keywords are for or you go into facebook i think more most of you use facebook i do so when you use facebook and you say ah and who is this targo tav and libt so then i can go ta libt and whoop, there comes somebody else oh and I can read all the detail or the juicy detail I want to learn from her. I can read it there because that is how the keyword led me to something. But if I just say, um, John, which John? It can be John ever and that will not have a good way. So that is the importance of keywords that we have and the keywords that we use in research. And that's the same as happened if you do a research for, for your paper or for your, for your studies. And I don't know if you needed to have a, 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 a paper when you complete your, your study, or even at work, if you is that keywords you make, ah, yes, that's what I want to know about. This is what I want to know. That's how the people must feel about your paper. And that is that is how your paper will con will talk to the people. Okay. Okay, that's the thing is the same, it looks like the same page. Right. Then verb that you use in a good abstract. An abstract is as I say, you must catch the attention of someone. You must catch the attention of the people that is there. Um, it is like, come back to the uh, abstract and in introduction is very close in this case. It's like first impression. How long does it take us to take a get a first impression when you meet somebody for the first time? You met me for the first time. Many of you say, oh my God. Baldish guy with a dim shave sitting here with a t shirt on in the class. What is he thinking of us? Oh my goodness. That can be your first impression. Or say, oh, this guy talks too much. Or, oh, okay, I think this guy talks a little bit since I want to listen further. That's that first impression. It comes to three seconds to five seconds to make that first impression to see whether or not you can deal with a person whenever you meet someone. I don't see I fall in love. I don't mean love and first sight things but i mean um when you can deal with somebody oh you think ah that guy ah, i don't know that girl ah, i don't know that is what first impressions have and that is the same with an abstract and something that can help you with this abstract is a few words strong verbs that you write within your abstract to 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 to, to grab this person's attention and to make him feel about wow this is not a, a watered down paper this is not somebody who who wants to say something but he doesn't know what to say and uh, that's like an idiot who just wants to say something but this guy is actually very clever because he has something to say so he's saying it okay and in that case we use something like this 
address it. I, we address this issue or this paper argues that is so an argument already. Okay, so there's pros and cons in it. Uh, this paper asks the question whether or not going to Maldives, going or, or go, whether or not the Maldives are sinking. So, sorry Maldives, you're not sinking. I love to go there, but what I want to say, so this paper must grab your attention immediately. Sometimes it can be a, a negative thing to, to drag people's attention. This paper concludes that uh, if we don't follow the, the, the steps that is in this paper, we will have a problem that uh, people from Mars is going to take over the world. So, concludes. This paper covers the following. This paper demonstrates a strong verb that will make this paper, you believe in this. If I say, uh, you know what, it's not too hot, it's not too cold today. You will say, oh, this guy doesn't make up his mind. He doesn't believe even what is in this weather. But if I say, people, you know, we in Chiang Mai, where I'm at the moment, I'm at my home is here, it's, it's floods. It's terrible how we, can, we cannot live. That shows that I'm talking from my heart. I'm talking from experience because it's raining outside. That is how I want you guys to look at it when you're looking at, your, at the verbs you choose in your abstract, the, actually, the verbs you choose throughout the whole paper. Okay? Demonstrates, describes, discusses. Discusses means it's not like I'm just going to mention you some fact. I discuss the fact, I tell you what's good. It educates, enhances, evaluates, examines, expands, explains, explores, identifies, maps, outline, presents, proposes. Sorry. Thank you, son, babes. Okay. Oh, you are so clever. So all these words is very important by how you're going to attract the people to say they really believe in what you are doing in this paper. Um, I'm talking. Is everybody still there? Any questions so far? Anybody can still hear me? Just somebody not. Yeah, I have a question, doctor. So... Uh, uh do we talk about conclusion in the abstract yes it will be uh, yes ronald you are 100 percent right in the in the pilot i'm going to get it it's 100 percent right in your abstract you'll have the con not only the conclusion you will have to to tell them what i did, what I did how i did it I and did the conclusion it. i have all, all into one so if if i say to you just let me quickly think of something now um, and I'm going to bring what I'm just going to, I'm thinking of something that I don't know what you guys are studying. So let me just do something that is most probably somebody will be interested in. It. If, if I say meditation, well, I did a, the research, I did a qualitative research. In this research, I, I, I did a lot of old paper. And that's, if I say this research concluded that meditation will help you to pass an exam. That's all. So now I don't say how I did it yet. That will be in the rest of the paper, Ronald. But mm -hmm. that will show, aha, uh -huh, okay. There is not only a, a juicy piece of meat or a vegetable for the people who is vegan here, but it's also, there is also a result. And this result is, wow. Okay, now I want to read it all. And that's it. That's the effect of your, of your abstract. Got it? Yeah, got it. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? So are we talking about the exact conclusion or maybe uh, this research will conclude uh, whether this is uh, right or not? Yes. 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 We will get into that a little bit later, but you are 100% right. It, 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 this research concludes, or this research discusses, or this research has to say they um, evaluate and explore or presents or maps that this is the result of ABC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So we have an informative abstract. That is the first one we get the study concerns the global governance of knowledge system. So in this case, in this case, informative. We will just inform people of what we say, okay? 
Uh, this study argues that the drone. Uh, this, uh, this study argues. Uh, okay, they said I hurt myself. Okay, that's fine. This study argues that. What the kind of thing? This argue. This study argues that cordyceps does work for cancer patients, for 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 wiping out cancer. So in this case, it's informative. I did a research on cordyceps. Now cordyceps is something for my Bhutanese student that is there. I just quickly think of him. And then cordyceps is a worm that turned into a mushroom certain time of the year. It's up in the Himalayas. So the worm became a host. The mushroom, the, the mushroom took over. There's many, many health benefits. It's damn expensive, a million dollars for a kilo. But so, but so in this case, I have a result. So in this case, the result will be informative that A will, uh, will happen if I use it, or B will happen if I use it. So that will be a, a form, informative kind of abstract that you're doing. But that will be because of your research that you have, your, your abstract will be informative. You can, the, the structure of it, your, or it can be a structured abstract. The purpose of this, of this um, research was to explore whether or not um, COVID-19 will affect the way people buy um, food in the future. Okay. In this, and then the, the, the next one will be, in this case, it will be the design, the methodology, the approach that we did. We did a qualitative research. We were looking at research that was done in the past. And, our, and then we get to the research limitation. My research limitation was I only was able to do it in a, in my 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 uh, sample size was only the people from the northern parts of Thailand or from the island of Sri Lanka or from uh, the southern parts of Philippines or whatever the case may be. My limitation, the practical implication of this will be A, B, and C, and um, the the value of this will be if we do it this way, there will be a change in it. But as I say, my paper type, I my paper is a qualitative or a quantitative research. We're going to go into that as well. And this is my keywords. Okay, so that is different from the informative one. Informative where I tell them what will be the uh, consider and what will be the uh, information or argues and say what is like more like the, uh, a different way of telling the truth. Okay, so that will be in your um, abstract. The next part of your, your of your paper is your introduction. So abstract, as I say, is a synopsis of everything. Now introduction. Uh, so you don't get a summary in a, in a in a research paper. You get a abstract, but it will be more detailed, more constructed like a summary. Okay, different words, powerful words to get the people, and especially scholars, people who who like to research, will look at your paper. When it comes to your workplace, and you most of us, the boss will have a master's degree. At least, so or if he has that, he said, "Oh, I, I remember back when I was studying." So let me give a look at the research. So even if it's at your workplace and you want to give a research paper, that's also going to introduce him in a more theoretical, more scholar-like way of writing, and not only a report with a summary. Okay. The first thing in your paper that's very, 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 very important is your introduction. There's only one thing that's more important in your paper, but I'll come to that one now. And into introduction. Your introduction, as I said, your introduction and your um, uh, abstract is what gives that people the, the first impression of what you are doing. It will say, well, okay, I want to read this. The introduction is, is substantive content of the science. So that is what your study is about. It's not only about the history. Introduction is not only about the history of whatever you are studying, whatever field you are in. It is, it is more than that. It sets the scene of your whole paper. It makes yourself, it makes a paper to say, wow, okay. It's like, I want to watch this movie. It's like, um, I, I have Netflix, and I think most of us have maybe Netflix at home. When I want to watch a movie, I watch the trailer. To say, oh, in this introduction, yes, this looks like a nice movie. There's not, in the, there's not too much sex and violence in it or, or swearing. My boy was, was always with me. He can watch it with me. Because uh, on the moment he doesn't understand, but 
he understands bad words and he picks it up too quickly. So things like that can create a situation because that is what happened in the first part, the introduction of the movie. So your introduction set the scene of what is going to come in there. If your introduction, students, and I am a, I'm a professor at university, as I say, I can read, and, and most of my students in my, in, my, in my classes is doing research programs or projects for every course they take with me, okay? If it is, um, what did we do now? Uh, introduction to, to economics. They're going to do a, a, a research paper on it. And every time I take the first page and I read it and say, mm, okay, this student copied or this student said, and he doesn't, didn't want to do any work. Oh, wow. This paper has actually journal publication potential. That is what happened in the introduction. I can find it already there. To see what the people are doing and how they feel. There I can find, if you write with your heart, if you believe in what you think it is there. And what I believe and what you believe will not be the same. If I read and I say... Um, my boy here is busy coloring in about um, Halloween, okay? And if I say, okay, Halloween is about spider spaghetti and tombstone tea and scarecrow. And I talk to you like this, you'll say, oh, we all know it. And because I don't believe in Halloween, okay? For somebody who said, oh, but you know what? I love vampires. I like it. He would say something and you will read it in the, in the, in the set of the scene and say, oh, yes. I want to hear more about it. Even if something you're not even interested in, you will be learning more. And that's what happened in the introduction. Okay? That brings the reader in, in and gives a flavor of what is to come. It is like that introduction of a nice movie, that set of, a, of intro scene of, wow, I want to see this movie. If it's a love story or or, 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 a, or adventure story or whatever the case may be, in this case now in the research paper, yes, it's something that attracts me. I looked at your keywords in your abstract. I let you look at this. Yes. And this will be like the introduction to your paper. It also states the purpose of your paper. Why did you do this paper? It also states the scope of your paper. Why, why you take the scope? Okay. It says how issues are addressed. How did you do the paper? The problems that is there. And it starts from general. And you will go more to specific. You will go more. It's like starting wide. And it's like a, a funnel. It will get more to specifics where the people will like, wow, okay, how did he do it? What did he do there? How did he do it? Uh, and that's important to know that he's on a paper that this guy not only talking and he's not only the top of the funnel. Top of the funnel never goes to the bottom. If it's little foam on the top, it will stay there and it's, it's useless. The good stuff is going to the bottom. And that is what happened in your introduction. Okay? In general, introduction should be, should be brief. And certainly no more than six or so for a six of your, of your whole study. A six part of it, so it's not very long. However, it must be that ice cream lick, I want more. That is how you have to write this paper. Um, in my summer class now, one of my students, um, unfortunately, he was from, from Sri Lanka. No, it's not unfortunate. He's a good student from Sri Lanka. And he was in challenge with a guy from Nepal. But eventually he got high school because the way he wrote, it was the whole time, it's like a story. He's telling a story. He believes in what he was doing. And it is a nice read for me. And it's a nice read for anybody who's going to read this paper. We are actually going to publish this paper now. So what, is, what happened is like the way he writes is like there's a beginning. You can find the whole introduction. You can find this a whole line and you can find it up to the end. And that is how an introduction must grab your attention. Okay? It may also, but not, it may, it may include background. If I want to talk about the economy of America and how the economy of America changed due to COVID-19 and how people changed and how their mindset changed. Sorry, I say with economics, I was actually asking you guys, what is your... Your, your major there. But so if that is a, and I go in my whole introduction and said America was discovered in the, in the early times by a guy from China and then it was discovered by the, 
uh, Christopher Columbus and they were fighting on the shores and eventually that has nothing to do with the paper so all of that background is going to be useless or if, if you talk about which your, your country and I'm not going to say which country but if, if I must talk about the country and say oh you know they tell the whole history of what happened people is going to get so lost and feel but this has nothing to do so be very very careful in the introduction not to try to give a history lesson that is just to fill up space Rather get your introduction where it makes people to believe and listen to what, like, wow, I want to read this book. Wow, I want to, it must be like a book. It must be, I, I want to have this more information. And that is what will, must be the aim of your introduction, the introduction of your paper eventually. The next one. And students, I, as again, I don't know whether or not you're going to do a, a research paper for uh, for getting your, your your diploma or your degree here. but if you do a paper and if you do a paper also for your workplace or for yourself in anything that you want to write about or anything you want to research but I, I hear something scream oh okay it's no problem okay all right students I said there's something more important than introduction. That is your literature review. Literature review means I'm going to read about something that I don't know or what I have a vague idea about. And I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to read more papers and more papers. I'm going to have different views on this paper. And then if you're doing a, a, a theoretical research, like for, for, for a degree or a diploma or whatever you want to study or a certification, you, you say, but you know what? I don't know what topic I must write about. What will this be the topic I'm writing? I don't want to know about the topic when you start. When a student of mine go and they want to do research and they want to write about the research and methodology, the first thing I say to him, even before he starts, he said, oh, but I think about this. No. Go and do literature review and find whether or not there is something like this already. And if there is, what has not been addressed or what jumped into your heart and said, wow, this is what I want to talk about. Wow, this is, why didn't they do this? And that is, that is what your literature review, that's your guidance throughout your whole paper to keep you on track to say, ah, oh, my paper is, is, is not Wikipedia, so it's not a lot of nonsense that is in there. It is a lot of truth, and it's been researched already. But why haven't they attacked this part? Why didn't they talk about this piece? That is what I'm interested in. And you will see a light coming up. And that is what literature review must be, must be all about. If you do have a paper in the, in, in the future that you have to write while you're studying, um, and they say, okay, you have to do a research paper. Don't start, ah, okay, I'm going to write about the weather of Southeast Asia. Or I'm going to write about how Southeast Asia is important for the economy of the world. Or um, how Bhutan is going to be the uh, organic farm basket of the world. Or how Sri Lanka is going to make the world sure that the world is drinking more tea. Or how the Philippines is going to keep their own fish instead of selling it to the to the, to the Thai people. Oh, I'm just thinking of a few things. I'm still going to get to Bali. Why? Why Bali is is uh, tourist industry is so uh, is on the decline. Okay, that is questions. But if you do literature review and you read about this, what other people did already, you find that wow. Inside there is something that I feel is not attached to. Something inside there is what makes me feel I believe in it. Many of you, and I think uh, um, Toby are all over the world, most of you like a certain sport. If you like sport, if you like football or cricket or, or rugby or whatever the case may be, you'll say, why do you scream for that specific team? Why do you support a specific team in your life? Is it because your father supported or is it because... You know what? I love uh, football. I love Man United. Why? I love Man United because Man United is 
is the, the Red Devils. Okay, why? But you have a Liverpool t shirt on. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. So, um, or is it there because I'm so involved in my team, I believe in how this team can be successful because it's something in me is, is awake. Something in me blossom when I say about that team. That's the same with literature review. That literature review, students, I've been in, in, in a professor for sure, maybe 21, 22 years. I'm a professor in, 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 in Asia. And every time it comes to the same thing, students said, oh, professor, what must I write about? I have no idea. I said, go and read about it first. And every time, every time students come in, it's like they fell in love. Their eyes are shining. And I said, Professor, why haven't they talked about this? This is what I'm going to research. This is what I'm going to do. I said, okay, great. Now you know what? Now I'm going to read only about that. And that is how re literature reviews plays the most important role. Wow. Most important role in your research, I believe. Because that will give you the guidance of what you're going to write about. The writing of a, of a paper is easy. If uh, I don't know how many of you have been to Thailand or been to... Uh, let me use Thailand. Uh, I mean, I'm in Thailand. I live in the northern part of Thailand called uh, Chiang Mai. And if you say to me, uh, and, and my university is in Bangkok and another one is in Hua Hing. Hua Hing is just south of Bangkok. It's at the sea. And they said, um, how do you get there? I said, no, I either fly or I drive my car. They said, but uh, what is the road? And I said, gee, I don't know. You know, uh, I follow the GPS, and if the GPS take me to, um, to, to Mali to get to, to Bangkok, it's also right. It's nonsense. I know the road because I have the GPS branded in here. I know the direction is south of Chiang Mai, and I go that way. My car doesn't go by itself. I have directions. I take it there. And that is the importance of literature review. It is giving you direction of how you're going to do your paper, how you're going to look at quality or quantitative research, what kind of research you're going to do, what you're going to attack, what, what, what are you going to do with them, um, not only looking at people's papers, or are you going to, to do information, are you going to do interviews, are you going to send out uh, uh, questionnaires. That all will come through the literature review that give you that inspiration to find out what you want to discover and what you want, not only want to discover for yourself, but what you want to blow out there for the whole world to know what you want to do. Literature review. So now what, what did I say? What we wrote here? Tell others uh, have found on the site. What we have found in the site. So that is what comes through literature review. Okay? Provides a context of how the work is documented. The extended advantage of the works of understanding the knowledge of how the work is must be done. And you'll find nothing is not been there that's not been discovered before. Sometimes things is not completely there. And that's maybe where you put in like a puzzle to complete the whole picture. Okay? It demonstrates that you are familiar with past and present thinking of the research topic. So the literature review will give you also how, how the people are thinking. Is Adam Smith wrong? No, Adam Smith was not wrong in saying there is a golden uh, 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 invisible hand that shake and that make supply and demand coming together. Actually, Adam Smith in his papers many, many, many years ago mentioned behavioral economics. Nobody touched it till 2010 when uh, people started to look into behavioral economics and the first person who actually used behavioral economics in running a country was Barack Obama. He used part of behavioral economics to look at how they can make America great again. Okay. So that is how behavioral economics lately, when we were still already grown up, when they, you are grown up, I'm still young, but when they started to um, looking at different places, that was Adam Smith mentioned, has only researched lately. Uh, and that is what happened through literature review. Okay. Literature review also is a highly selective and specific, referring to pieces of paper that only you are going to be involved in. Not generalizing, but it will be relative, relevant actually to the argument that you want to make in the future. Okay? Literature review. 
Next part is a little bit easier. It is also very important as well. It's the methodology and, and the analysis, the outcomes and the results you have. We will go to this in the, in the next sector. I'm going to talk a little bit, give you a five minute break. We're going to come back again. But in this methodology, we will talk more about the methodology and what we're going to do in methodology. Details how this research was carried out. So in your methodology side, we were looking at what happened in your research. How was the research? No, I just suck it from my thumb. No, that's what research. How the research was done, how scientifically the research was done. The analysis should be clearly and unambiguously un, un, what the findings are and how they are being interpreted. When you set out with your research, you have an idea. You read about it. Now you're doing the method. If, and you have a hypothesis to say the sky is blue. So you believe the sky is blue. In your research, when you do this research and it comes out, the sky is actually not blue. You must not now try to manipulate this research to prove that the sky is blue. It's your job then to say, ah, okay, this was my interpretation. This was my topic. This was what I thought is going to happen. This is what's actually the facts. This is actually the hypothesis that was tested, showed that actually the opposite is true. That is what you, not what you as a person want to lead them to, but what the facts were saying. Um, in, uh, I watch a lot of movies in this COVID-19 time, but there's also a series, um, CSI. And CSI, people go and they take, uh, they say that person, who killed this person? We don't know. It's maybe that guy because he looks like a, he, I don't like his face. It can be him. No, they don't do it that way. They take everything together. They put it on a table. Oh, it's a movie, but the principle is still the same. They're looking at this thing and they take the facts and they build a case according to the facts that is there. And that is how a methodology, meaning the method and the analysis and the outcomes and the interpretation of those outcomes are, is based on facts, not how my heart is feeling. Um, I had some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends in Maldives. And he, the first thing he said to me when this bomb exploded and this, uh, this um, bad thing happened in Beirut, and if people f is here from Beirut or have family there, I really I, I sympathize with you and I feel very, very sorry with you. And the first thing that Musa told me, he said, it's the Israelis. They don't like the Muslims. They blew up the Muslims. And that is the fact. And I know how Musa feels. And I know how his heart is. And he's a wonderful, wonderful friend. But he talked not about the facts. He talked about that emotion. So I didn't know even there was, there was this big bomb blast in, in Beirut, for instance. So I had to go and do research. I had to go and I read and I read and I read and I read. Eventually, it came out to say, okay, it was um, phosphate that was stored, and this created this, uh, this, uh, this gases, and it was ignited, and that created all this. And in fact, if you are a farmer and you use um, fertilizer, you can actually create bombs from it. Don't go and blow up someplace. But that, that is fact. So we have to look at the fact, and even if we don't like a specific group or a specific outcome, this is what is the fact. So we have to report what is on the facts. In this case, students, I can talk many, many things about it. Like I had a student, that's the last example I will show you. She came out and we had a class of uh, entrepreneurial finance. And in entrepreneurial finance, I gave them, I said to them, go and do, uh, get yourself a topic, get yourself a research, get yourself a question you want to do, make a company, Sell me the company, that will be your final mark in this paper. And one of the guys said, and um, he was an American, and he said, ah, I'm going to look at how I can support Trump in selling red caps and say, make America great. In the back of the class was a little girl, also from America, and she jumped up and she said, you make my hair stand up straight. I hate Trump. There's nothing good he's doing. And I will prove it 
in my paper that is going to be to show how the housing is collapsing in America because of Trump. I left it. I said, okay, fight each other, fight outside, don't fight in the class, I don't like black guy all over the place because then I have to clean it. But I like the students to have their own opinion because that brings out the better in themselves. At the end, after about 16 weeks, after 16 weeks, she came up to the front and she said, you're all going to laugh at me. You all know what I'm going to say. However, I have to tell you I was wrong. And I said, huh? Because I even thought she was right. She said, this is a fact. One, two, three, four, five. How in that area where she lived, housing actually improved and people started to live better. I said, wow. So what did she do? She took and didn't stay in her emotion where she was hating what happened in a certain political party. And uh, very good page. She, what she was doing, she was going and she would look at the facts and she reported the facts. And I had respect to her for it till today. Later on, she did another call. She had to drop out because if something bad happened to her. I said to her, you know what? You can be in the States. You can write from your paper. I will still accept it because that impression that you have you report facts make me to have respect for you in the industry okay and for me in this case being a professor at university and that is how facts and not emotion or certain belief structure must influence the way you're looking at the methodology and analysis of your paper okay and how you're going to have this article to show me is by having statistics if you're doing a, especially if you do a quantity quantitative paper you're looking at statistics and say, but this is a black and white. This should show what is happening in the world. Happening in the world to say COVID-19 is not yet finished because the statistics shows more people is getting it. Okay? Or tables. Or charts. Or maps. Or quotes. But quotes don't tell me um, Mr. Bean said blah, 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 blah. That quote is not going to help at all. But make sure sure that it will be facts that actually support your case to show what happened and what you did in your in your research. And that is coming to your methodology part. The next part is your discussion. That becomes easier because you did all the work and now everything is now a table full of data or raw, raw data. Now you're going to sort it out, put them together, and then your discussion falls together, the previous section where you link everything together from the literature review and you started to write your story it brings key points together it doesn't leave something hanging in the sky like a puppet it brings things to say i went from a to z on this specific thing and that is how it worked with your discussion and then eventually your conclusion summarize the rational of your findings by proof 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 not by having your heart into it uh, meaning you're writing with your heart. Your heart must be, I believe in it, I write it, this is what, I'll go, wow, I didn't believe it's going to be like this, and that is the nicest thing when you do a research. Um, um, I, I don't know, yes, I'm going to tell you, my biggest failure in my life was a research that made me, and I'm going to tell you this, and I thought today I use it to say I was even an idiot. When I was your age, because I'm quite a few years older, um, my first degree was I'm an industrial engineer before I studied further on in, in finance and economics. So I finished off industrial engineering and I wanted to get involved in the community. And in this community, they said, okay, we're going to help you. We're going to say to you, please go and research whether or not cell phones is a good way to communicate. Is and we are actually want to supply it to the government officials of a small, small country called South Africa. And I went in there lock, stock, and barrel without doing lots of homework. But in that size, a, a cell phone was a little bit nearly as big as this thing as my hand. It was a big blocks of bricks, and um, there was nothing in it. You could only phone it and then. And you can't even put it in your pocket because it was too big. The smallest one was a little Siemens, but it was not the battery, but didn't even last for half an hour. So, after three months of research and a research paper that was over 10,000 pages with stats and everything I could do, 
I recommend shell phones will not last. Why? I was an idiot. But I don't think I brought all the points together. I don't think I had a look at what's going to happen in the future. Because in my life, I never thought a cell phone would take over that you don't need um, encyclopedias anymore. You don't need full-on computers anymore. You don't need telephones anymore. You don't need cameras anymore. You don't need Skypes and fax machines anymore. I never thought this will be the outcome. But that is how uh, in, in my life to learn that from mistakes I had to think more and I had to do a lot more research before I would say to a big thing to say no, cell phones are a bad thing. So that is when you come to the rationale and the findings to make sure that your findings and uh, maybe limited, yes, in your findings but to make sure that there's always a door open that it can advance and advance and advance. It also, in your conclusion, reaffirms how the research advances understanding and knowledge, that's what happened in the understanding of the knowledge that we're bringing out, outlines how future studies could build on it and extend a research and argument reported. In my case, when it comes to the cell phones, I said, this is law. I did not think and I didn't leave open to say probably we could look further. I was further involved in the later stage in China where, uh, in, in, in where Siemens, okay, Siemens had a phone and Siemens was taken over by a company called the, the phone section by a phone company called BenQ. And uh, BenQ asked me if it's a good idea and I said no. And BenQ didn't listen to me. They went further and they did buy Siemens and most of you don't even know who's BenQ because they were a very, very strong company that collapsed because of the cell phone industry that they were not supposed to be in, they went into it. But that is how I could learn. And that's the same with you. Your first paper will not be the greatest. But if you don't start now and don't get into the habit of writing a paper, it can be a big problem, okay? And your whole, your, and then back to your conclusion, the discussion, your conclusion, but the conclusion will link back into your introduction. The whole paper, is a story. The whole story doesn't leave you hanging here in the sky eventually and like a bad movie where you say, ah, oh, but what is the outcome now? I had I have no idea what is going on here. No, you have an idea and you write it in this and you write it in your conclusion. Um, back to what, what uh, uh, you were asking, is is there a conclusion in your abstract? Yes, you have a conclusion there, and as I say, your conclusion also bring it back. Your abstract for me, and if I can explain it, and I hope you understand, is like me standing on a tall building, looking down uh, at what I see. The conclusion for me is going underground and looking up of what I see. So the two is actually intertwining each other to make sure that you know uh, what is in the paper from the abstract down, conclusion up, and um, that is how you look at the conclusion. Eventually, and, and lastly, it's your references to make sure, and we will talk a little bit more in the, in the next part. Uh, I've just seen my time is running out quickly. So, uh, in the references, uh, make sure that you have references. Students, if it's not your own work, you reference it. Plagiarism is the worst thing that can ever happen. My rule at university is if you plagiarize once and you have, and we, we check you, and if you do a paper, people do check you and we check it through. It's different um, ways of, of, of looking if this paper was a repeat or a copy of somebody else's work. If you do not reference it and you say, I think if it's your own work and we found you at university, I, I kick you out. Even if you are a master's degree student and it's your last course, you will fail and you will not be able to complete your course. The same with my undergrads, I send them home. They fail. They don't get back into the university. Because plagiarism is worse than Chinese, and I hope I don't have, if I have Chinese students, is worse than Chinese copy. Because plagiarized is a copy we can see, ah, oh, okay, that is a has man and master has not the same car. But in the plagiarized to say, this is my work. Uh, wow. 
It is my work. It is what I discovered. And it's not your work, or it's not your graph, or if it's not your paper, or not even your picture. Yes, excuse me. Yes, you're familiar with zombie and the scarecrow, okay? But there's two scarecrow and a scarecrow soup as well. Thank you, my big poet. Okay, uh, sorry, students. So what I want to say is, when you come to, to references, reference everything. It's not your own work. It's not your own work. If it's even if it's a photo, even and learn it from even if you put that photo onto Facebook. If it's not your work, people's going to know it. Somebody's going to see it. The other day, I had a student of mine. She's part of me on Facebook, and she was writing a poem, and she put this picture that is actually is a, it's a nice picture of. Of, of Bhutan and was looking over the mountain with a big moon beautiful beautiful thing was but she's not even from Bhutan she's from Myanmar and she was mentioning that and she said wow and because she's my friend and I and I like it some of my friends from Bhutan check and said hey who sent that picture it was my picture I took that picture and she eventually had to come and say sorry 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 don't get into a sorry situation or a sorry uh, situation it can even get worse where uh, copyright infringement and things like that can be very, very bad. So make sure if it's not your work, give credit to somebody who's doing the work. In my life, I must give credit. I don't do it for my wife. She's washing the dishes. I don't touch a dish because I'm a man. I don't wash she dishes. Gets, she's very dirty. Yes, okay. Go on. Then. So uh, I must give her the, 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 the credit for doing that. So that's the same with the reference. Um, if it's a textbook, if it's a journal you're reporting from, a report, if it's a workshop or a seminar or a thesis or a dissertation or a paper or a magazine, whatever you take from somebody else. And if it's in Google Pictures, make sure you, you, you say who, who it is. Otherwise, it's not your own. Okay? Right. If it's your own, take credit for it as well because that's also worth the while. And then write it in a, in a, in a journal format, an, an IPA format. You can go into more detail how the APA format looks like. And again, I wrote here, avoid plagiarism. I can't talk about it, enough about it. It's how plagiarism is working. If you want to make a paper, everything is checked and um, it's peer reviewed. Other people check also your paper. You never know who's going to read your paper. You never know. Even if you write a paper only for your work. Because now it's on the boss's computer. Your friends and the boss's parents are not the same. So maybe the boss's friend sitting there says, wow, but that looks familiar. Make sure it is your own work. If it's a website or whatever you're doing, plagiarism is bad. It's bad. Don't copy paper and people's, other people's things and don't give them the credit for it. Very important. Give the credit where credit is due. Okay? Make your own words and your own words is, is very important. Make your, Do your own work. Okay? Right when they... Uh, when writing quotes, record page numbers, whatever people are doing, write what they are doing, their bi biography as well, or bibliography. Okay. Um, your ideas is your ideas, but give credit where credit is due. Um, that's uh, the only thing I can say a lot about uh, plagiarism, but uh, it's, it's, make sure it's your own work. Um, there's a research paper there. This guy, if you before you write your paper, you finish your paper, there's something you can... You can look at his brown eight questions while writing a research paper. What did you do? Um, you can write limited to 50 words. Limit 50 words. If you write more, it means, oh my goodness, you started to, to, to lie. In a shorter the words, the less you can be honest with yourself. Why did you do this report? Why did you do this research? What happened in it? What's the revolving in the theory, in practice? What is it going to do for the readers? And um, that questions will help you in the future. To, to do your when you do your own research paper, and with that, let me just get your faces back here. That will be the conclusion of, of the first part. I'm going to give you about two minutes or three minutes break into PP or to ask me some questions, and then um, we'll go quickly through the second part. Any questions? I'm open. I'm here for you guys. Um, free time till say half past ten. Alaka Diaz has left the meeting. Okay. No questions? 
everybody fell asleep. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Tindu Wang Mo. Tindu Wang Mo. Do I know you? No. I don't. No. Tindu? Yeah, Tindu is uh, with LIBT too. She is working with us. So she's joining your session too. <laughs> yes, I know her. <laughs> I think Tingli Maybe. is my is my Facebook friend. Is this a recent Tingli? Uh, yeah, there. Uh, I think Tingli must be sleeping. What happened, Tingli? You are not there. Uh, okay, doesn't matter, Kasab. Yeah, John, uh, so uh, since nobody is asking, a quick uh, question from my side. Uh, we, you talked a lot around uh, plagiarism. Yes. Uh, and uh, recognizing sources, uh, reference sources uh, properly. Uh, given the kind of uh, sources, given the kind of uh, uh, references that are there on the internet, uh, uh, your research could be populated with references uh, uh, because uh, you would have the same thoughts as uh, a lot of this uh, uh, literature already there. Uh, so, uh, how do you depopulate or, uh, or you know, uh, perhaps maybe uh, trying to edit and change the sentence might help, but uh, what, what, what are some of the rules to uh, keep a good, clean uh, kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, research work? Because some is a very, very good question. It starts off by at the beginning of what are you researching? If you just want to, to, to rewrite another person's paper or another people's paper, um, then your research is not going to have any value. So yes, to, re to, to, to um, reply to, to say what other people were saying is very good, but it mustn't only be what other people are saying. Then it's not, then it's not your research. It's, then it's just a reporting back of what other people say, or a summary, like an encyclopedia or a, or a work page of just writing other people's work. So, okay, but, so what you have to do is to, to when you, and then that's why I say your literature review is so, so, so important. In that, you must not read literature review and just report it back. In a literature review, you must find the gap. The thing that you find that, but they don't talk about it. And that's what you're going to write about. And if you write it, it will, be, it will be from your heart, it will be your own idea, it will be your own research, even if it's in a different, say, say for instance, I want to research um, how, glo how global warming affects the, the environment uh, or, or the natural environment, or the, yes, or the forest, how global warming um, affects forestry in a country okay and if there's a lot of work done already say in Bhutan then and Bhutan he who is highly forest uh, so available and, and they protect the forest and only quoting them is not going to be in that the same effect if I mention that and say and draw it back into Thailand if I do research I can use the research that was done in Bhutan but I have to go back now. I have to go into where I stay in Chiang Mai. I have to go into the forest areas, interview the people, do my research, um, um, do a research questionnaire, talking to the, to, the, to the public health officers of the area, talking about the firefighting, because in Chiang Mai in, in, the, in, the, in the winter, winter of the no rainy season, we don't have really winter, but in the no rainy season, Chiang Mai becomes the dirtiest city in the world. It's the number one dirtiest city. In, in the summer, it's the most, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. In the winter, it becomes so dirty because of the forest fires kill off the forest. And so if I only quote what happened in research done in Bhutan, it will not actually show what happened within, in Chiang Mai or in, in Thailand. So, um, yes, there can be a lot of work, but if you only copy other people's work, what is new? It's not something new. So your research... Must be something, bring something fresh to the table, and 
Uh, when I talk to this, I, I also want to mention it now to, my, to the students who's doing research now and who's in the, in the process of studying now. You know what? It is an unexplored world out there because everything was same o same o till beginning of this year with COVID-19 hit us. Everything changed. The way people looking at, at, at education, the way people looking at, at training, the way people looking at going to school. He's five years old. His school system changed. Five-year-old kids going to school cannot play with each other anymore. They have to keep social distancing. In the past, it was never there. So everything became a new, became a new way of exploration for the future. And that is what, and so only now looking at the past and the past is not going to help. So there's so much opportunity for research in any, any field on the moment. So that creates a situation where if we only now copy what other people were saying, it's useless information anyway. It's not going to take us anyway because we need answers for a new tomorrow. And research is like a project. It's like research and development that you're looking into a, to our company. You say, ah, oh, we want to do research because we need to go forward of where we were in the past. So only plowing with another guy's cows is not, or ox is not going to make my field fresh and having a farm that I can harvest something from it. And that is why how we must see our research now is the challenge for me bringing something out. So only copying other people's work uh, will not be an issue to, to respect them for what they did in the past. But now from what they did in the past of where we are now, is completely different. Even the way we're looking at food and what we are going to eat and what we are... Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not even clever in food yet, but how organic food is taking over the marketplace again in Thailand, where um, all these new technologies, people want to live healthier than they did in the past. In the old days, will not work anymore to say, keep in, breathe in, breathe out. If you don't, and if you don't, Take a pill. There's a pill for everything. The world started to change. The younger generation does not believe in the old answers anymore. They want new, fresh ideas. And I think that will create a place where we will not rewrite only old research, research, research all, all the time. I hope I answered a little bit of your question. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I have a question. Yes. So is it okay to bring up the old research that is, uh, you might think that it is irrelevant at this point of time? Yes, old research is very important to, to give you, and, and, and as I say in your research uh, question, it is where uh, or your um, literature review, you have to bring it in. And even in your discussion, you can always, you always bring back your literature review into your discussion as well. Um, we can't, we don't, nothing, is, as I say, not many things has been there that hasn't been discovered already or written about already. So if you don't write, if I, if I want to write about how an epidemic affects the economic outcome, Okay. How the uh, how, no, my boy can't talk my words away. Yeah, how an epidemic affects the way economy will be changing in the world. Wow, it's new. No, it's not new. That's not the first epidemic that was there already in the past, Ronald. Yeah. So you have to have that basis with pure good uh, research that was done and use that as a, as a springboard, not to prove 20 things. And that is when I come back into the second part. If you're looking at a topic, if you want a research question, um, don't take on something like a mountain. Rather take the stone in a mountain and discuss a stone in a mountain that can influence how the mountain will be growing in the future or the how the mountain will be chopped down in the future. That's important with research. 
We cannot go and change the world with one research paper. But we change the world by small bites, small things that we do to make sure that eventually all the small things put together create a completely different environment for us and for the future. Okay? Right. Um, I have one question. Um, yes, I uh, if, if you're done with that answer, I'm sorry. I think I might have interrupted there. No, go on. It's okay. Yeah. So um, uh, a problem that uh, I came across with one of my uh, previous research uh, projects was, um, for example, if I'm trying to localize, let's say, a broader topic to, to the Maldivian community or to the Maldivian society, um, uh, what I find uh, is that in the Maldives, we don't really have much uh, data on certain things or readily available. There may there might be data, but it's not readily available. And there, uh, there uh, on the other hand, there might not be any data at all. So if I'm trying to, let's say, take a broader topic and apply that uh, uh, hypothesis to the Maldivian uh, community uh, in my literature research, or uh, uh, literature review. If I can't find any uh, literature that is uh, relevant to my research uh, locally, especially, what should I do in that that scenario? Hassan, also a very very good question, and I'm going to come back with that with with an with a, uh, example as well. But um, what you have to do, you have to find what other country, what other research was done in another place that is similar to the situation in the Maldives. Um, Similar in a way of it can be due, uh, geographically, it can be religious, depending on what you are looking at. And um, coming with that, I'm going to use I'm going to use Bhutan as an example. Bhutan is uh, is a small high, a small country here, in the landlocked in the in the Him close to the foot of the Himalayas, that most of the income or what, most of the projects and most of the income for the country is running is running around in hydroelectric power. So now, if when we do a project in the Bhut in Bhutan, we're looking at hydroelectric power. There is not much that that is written, or there's only so much that that is done in Bhutan that was the same. But a country that was similar and that they based most of their things on was interesting enough. Was a country called Uganda in Africa. They used Uganda information to 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 apply and 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 see whether or not that is capable of, of, of implementable within the Bhutan region. And that is how um, you must find something that is similar, even if it is completely a different structure. We're looking at Uganda that's an African, it's, it's completely different tribal system. It's a tribal system where, where Bhutan is not. It is, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a different um, race, it's a different belief system, because Bhutan is very, um, um, Believing in in, in, uh, in Buddha as is a Buddhist, a Buddhist, a Buddhist country, where, where Uganda is uh, believing in um, spiritual leaders for, for for black magic and stuff. But eventually, when it comes to the hydroelectric power side, that was where the match was in that specific um, research that was done. Okay, when it comes to hydroelectric power, it's power. So um, it, whatever your research is. If it's not only if it's not that much information available, say in Maltese, looking at a country that has a similar um, situation within your research question, you can also read about that. Then you are not only bound to to the Maldives because Maldives are also very unique in many of their own ways, um, even in the tourism industry. Because uh, I, I'm just thinking quickly, and I'm. I'm I don't know if I'm right, but in the Maldives has quite a few islands, and the Philippines has quite a few islands. If you're looking at the tourist industry, probably I will do something like that. But depending on the on the topic and the research topic, what I will, which country I will compare them to, to the Maldives. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, husband. More questions? No questions? Okay. Um, let me just quickly check it. Ronald, you are from, from uh, Philippines. 
No, I'm from Indonesia, Jakarta. Oh, you're also from, oh, you're from yeah. Indonesia. I now remember, man. You're from Indonesia. You see, if you have shows, you get old like me, and, and I can't be grey because I have no hair to be grey. I start to forget everything. My okay. hair's all grey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I'm going to go to the next section, and I'm going to go quickly through it. Um, I'm sure that if you will have also the, the, the copies of the, of, the, of the slides, I think so, that is available, I'm not sure, but um, it will be more in detail, of, of, or you can come back and you can answer, ask some questions later on regarding it in, in another session, or if, if you want to know something more. So let me look at this next part, and let me see now we get back to share here. Uh, no, it's wrong. Ah, you see, now it's me again with this thing. I'm so crazy. Back, you are presenting. Stop that presentation, I think. And it is presenting Chrome tab section two. Share. Ha! The old man learned something. What old man? No old man here. Okay, my voice here, I'm not an old man, so that makes me feel much better now. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to go quickly through a few slides here, and then I'm, uh, up. I think I spent too much time on the first part. You see why the scene is now so big, I can't even see it myself. Uh, Ron, Ron, can you just go up on the right-hand side? There is an icon called present up on the top. Present? Oh, yeah. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Hi, you Anyway. Right, I got it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, okay. Research methodology, design and process, and what is the research methodology? So we're going to go a little bit more into um, the research question and what we're going to do here now. Okay, let me see. Right, the types of research that we find: we have the pure and applied research. If we have pure research and applied research, we have to apply it. We have qualitative and quantitative quantitative research. That what what is meant here? Qualitative and quantitative research is the ones, if you do studying and if you do um, research, it will most of the time will be either qualitative or quantitative or a mixture of the two. There is not for me, and I know many people disagree with me and some people agree, but there is not much difference in a way that you, that you look towards your research. The qualitative or quantitative side of a research must not influence your research. Okay, eventually it will just say, okay, uh, it, it will be one or the other eventually. Wow, that's beautiful. Baby. So qualitative research is more on to recording what other people were saying. In quantitative research has a lot to do with, with stats and um, we use SPSS most of the time. I use SPSS, we will use stats and only the figures, no quotes, no in, uh, things will me meant much except that the uh, facts and figure, or fix figures will kind of count in this side. Okay, we will look at that. We're looking at the research process and the research proposal eventually, and then ethics in research is very important. It comes back to what we spoke earlier on. Okay, so we were looking at the research methodology. As we say, research is a process, okay, as a formulating a, re a research question. That is for me is important. Now, I get a topic. I want to talk about yeah. Halloween, okay? Um, research topic is Halloween. Okay, so can I write about Halloween? No. So in Halloween, I'm going to do now literature review, and I'm going to look now for a research question that is in Halloween. Uh, example, how, uh, and I'm just taking something out of my head now here, but uh, how Halloween or the, fa the, the figures in Halloween influence five-year-old children's um, vocabulary. Okay? So now it becomes uh, from Halloween to something smaller. So I'm looking now at uh, uh, formulating a research question or questions from my research methodology. Okay? Research process then, and we were looking at it now in a little bit more into detail. Right, so how we start? We have a research question. By the way, how do we find my research question? In your case, it can be at a workplace. It can be in your in your um, studies that you are doing. 
you're going to have a topic. And the professor in a, in a university will say, um, write for me about the influence of the, let's, let's see, who is angry with the Chinese. I, I don't know. Do I have any, do I have any Chinese in my, in my class? Just say, yeah, if you're Chinese in my class. Yeah. Ah, no worry. Okay, right. So, I just want to, I just want to stir the pot here. And if I say, if I'm, if I'm for your students, I say, how will the South China Islands influence Southeast Asia? That is my topic. That doesn't mean, oh, okay, now I'm jumping. That's where my topic is. How will Southeast, Island, Southeast Asian claimed islands from China influence Southeast Asia, the, the islands in the South China Sea? Now, oh, many students will say, oh, okay, abstract. And they write an abstract. And then they will start methodology and they fail. Because they run through it. And if I say 20,000 words or 10,000 words, ah, oh, professor, how can I write so much words? Because you haven't done any research yet. So what you are doing on your research question, you're going to do first, you're going to do literature review. And we talked about literature review. And said, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to read about the South China Seas. I'm going to read about um, Southeast Asia. And where, how can I combine the two of them? Eventually, I came out and, again, as I say, I just take something quickly here from my brain. And then I said, ah, oh, okay, the South China Seas is very bad. That islands is not the, why do the Chinese want to be there? So now I'm starting to read why the Chinese want to be there. No, it has nothing to do with army. It has nothing to do with, with, with uh, um, setting up islands there to, to, to blow the ships out of the sea. No, they do that because they try to be a bully. What is their main reason? Their main reason is probably nothing to do with the South China Sea. It's probably to do with the, the corridor that they want to build from China to, to, to Europe using the, uh, the railroad running here in the south of um, Laos, north of Thailand, all the way through to Italy. Because now if I build these islands, I'm just using an example again, as I say, I build these islands, it's not about the, the island itself, it's not about the fish that is in the island itself, because they don't care damn about the fish, ask them of these where they took over some of the islands. So they care about the nautical miles around the island. Most of that is now belong to this island group. So here comes Mr. Ronald on his fishing or on his boat. He packed up his boat full of, uh, of goods that he exports to Korea. So now it's on the boat, it leaves the harbor, and here it goes. Oh my God. It hits the international, uh, there is international water, no problem. Now it hits the national waters of this proclaimed island. Here jumps the Chinese. Customs and excise. Okay, Mr. Ronald. Now you pay money for going through my through my land uh, through my through my uh, water. So what happened now? Ronald has to pay money for him to pass through there, and that is what they're doing. So what do they do? They said, "Ah, oh, Ronald said, oh my, that is now too difficult to go to Korea this way. I must find another way." So and that is what is all about with the South China Islands. Again, I took it out of my head. It can be a conspiracy theory what I'm talking about. But what I say to you is. You, you, the, the, uh, the question that I had in the beginning is not your research question. So from your research, the research topic, you find uh, you're looking at the question. If it is um, in your workplace and you say, oh, okay, my, 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 top, my, my, my research topic is how can I Im improve the warehouse facilities of my company? Okay, so right now, eventually, immediately, they say, oh, okay, right, I can, I can do this, I can do that. No, that's not your research question. So your research question now from this topic must be, what am I going to try to change within it? And maybe it is, oh, create a more fluent flow of, through the warehouse, maybe, or put in another, put, just put in a door to make the flow better. I don't, sorry, you're too noisy. People can hear you, okay? Soft in our pipes, okay, we're nearly finished. So what I want to say to you, so when it's very important that you find a research question out of the topic that you want to discuss. Don't make your topic your research question. But make your research question something small, as I was saying to our son earlier on. I think it was to him, I'm not sure, to him or, or Ronald, that 
it, or, or, or do it, it doesn't matter. So if you have a research question, the question can, can be, or a research topic, it can be this big. Bring something small, change something small within it, and that can have an effect that create more research and research and eventually you change the world. Uh, a small example of this is down in South Africa, we had a red tide. Now, red tide is there's too many oxygen going into the seawater. When that happened, all the, the shellfish walked out onto the beach and died, including the, the crabs and the starfish. So here comes a reporter, went to South Africa. Now, we talked about thousands of starfish just lying on the beach, dying in the sun. They can't go out there because of the, the, the oxygen. It's gone already, but they already moved out. they delirious. They can't go back, so they're dying. And here goes a reporter to report on this beach of how the starfish is lying everywhere. And when she got there, here's an old man standing there, and he takes starfish, one, and throw it back in the sea. And take another one, and whoop, they throw it back in the sea. And she went up to him, and she said to him, Sorry, old man, I, um, I know you are, you are doing a wise good job, but... But what difference can you make? Look at all the thousands of starfish lying on this beach. What difference can you do? And he said, you know what? I made a difference for this one. And he threw it in the water. And I made a difference for this one. And he threw it back in the water. She dropped down her a, a, a recording and she started throwing starfish back in the water to make a difference for one. That's the same when it comes to research. Research don't change the world in one day. Take something small change that make your topic small the topic is big your research question smaller that you can handle it that you can come with facts and figures to change people's way of thinking or to affirm people's way of thinking of going to the future um, we have this problem now in thailand as well when it comes to people fighting against the monarchy and they're not going to go anywhere they're burning flags and they're jumping up and they're jumping down that's not going to help come with a solution to the problem and I'm sure that the government and even the kingdom will, or, the, or the monarchy will listen to what they have to say, but they don't. And that creates problems and they get thrown into prison for 15 years, no result. So a research question coming back must be something narrowed down to what you have to do, okay? So in your, re in your research process, you will have the processes that you are doing. You have the definition, what is your... Uh, 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 research that you're getting, the ethics and the type of researches that you have. Uh, I'm jumping out quickly. Okay, so a research in question, discover the problems that you are having. Okay, as I say, literature review first. There's a problem. Wow, why didn't they attack this problem? So now from this, I'm going to formulate my question. Either a problem is or an opportunity may have identified symptoms rather than problems or symptoms. So, in this big thing, you find one symptom and say, wow, why didn't the people attack this? Why didn't the people address this? And that becomes your research question. So then you explore it. Again, you go and now, after the big literature review, now you find a small thing that you think, but why didn't they do anything about it? Now you read about it again. Now you read more, concentrate it into the small thing that was there. Okay? So now you say, ah, okay, what can I read about this specific item within my research that I'm doing? And there you find the answer. So with that, now you define your question. And by defining it, you have one or two or three questions that you are having and you don't decide yet. You write your questions down and you sleep over it. And you take it to a friend and say, what do you think? And to another friend, and to your enemy, there's always moaning and groaning and say you're doing not your job. But say, what do you think? And from that, bring it down and limit it down to that you find and define a proper research question. As you can clarify possible actions, what you're going to do in the future, because if you narrow it down, you, say, you will be like, ah, this is what I want to do. Most of us, and I don't know if it happened to you, it happened to me in the past, when I did not know what, what I want to be and who I want to be in life. So when I was finished high school, my dad grabbed me by the ear, pulled me and said, you will be a teacher. And I said, never in my life I want to be a teacher. They're the poor asses who doesn't do anything. They're the lazy asses only work half a day. So my dad said, you will be. So he put me in the ear, put me in the university and said, you will be a teacher. Six months later, 
He went to university because they can't find me. I ran away. And that's the truth. I ran away because I hated to be a teacher. The only thing I did, I drank and I smoked and I, and I play around with women. And then I go to a class and I write an exam and I get about full marks for it because it's boring, non-interesting things that I have to learn there. So I ran away and I joined the army. So my dad ran and went up to the army bar barracks where I, was, where, I was, where I was enlisted. And they said, sorry, sir, you're not allowed in here. Your son is in basic training. I don't know what I want to do. So I came out the army. When I finished the army, my dad said, okay, no more money for you. You are on your own. So I started and I studied industrial engineering. Finally, I finished industrial engineering. I still had this gap in my life. I didn't know. I want to be an industrial engineer, but I don't want to be an industrial engineer. I was actually the youngest industrial engineer incorporated by Anglo-American in um, the gold mines of, of, of that time in, in South Africa. So then I started to study. I started, I started finance. I started economics. Um, I went up. Um, I don't know if you know about it, but I also I, I graduated from Harvard University. I'm, I'm great. I work. And then I was, uh, before that, I was actually recruited by, by the ANC, African National Congress. I worked for Nelson Mandela. He was my direct boss, so I worked for him. But it was nice. I hate the politics, and I so felt there is an emptiness within me. I fought against apartheid, but it was not enough. I spoke, but it was not enough. So when Mandela was was uh, resigning or, or, or actually uh, retiring, I said, "Okay, I'm also finished." And I got into and I was going to America, but some strange way and. It will take a year to tell you what happened. I landed up in China. Uh, cheated, uh, cheated, got into China, got into the little van that the guy was driving me. He said, okay, because I'm this big guy, PhD from, from Edinburgh University. Um, I couldn't finish my doctor's degree in Harvard because I ran out of money. But um, I'm this great guy. I'm a big boss. I work for one of the biggest leaders and biggest greatest guys in life was my friend. And sitting over the table of Bill Clinton having breakfast was one part of who I am. Excuse me. I don't on your ass there. Now. Go on. I'm, I apologize. He's, he's being nonsense now. Okay, so being through all that, now I come into China. They said, put me in a van and drove me off. And I said, oh, okay. They said, they just want to stop at the school and uh, look something. I said, okay. They said, come with me. So I walked with them. And I walk into a classroom of grade two primary school kids. And I said to them, and they all jump up and said, Good morning, teacher. How are you? And on that moment, at that specific time, my big arrogant head dropped on the floor. Who this great man is that wrote the SMMEs that they use still today in, in, in countries and developing countries and a small micro medium enterprise way how to do it. Ah, this great guy stands there with little small Chinese kids and he didn't know what to do. But for the first time in my life, I thought, wow, this is who I want to be. I want to be a teacher now. I have something to, to offer. And that is what comes with your research question. That's a, to take a long thing, that is what I want to tell you. That, so that is what you want to offer. And that is where you have to, you have to define your research question Make it so easy then, eventually, to write about it. And then everything else, from your methodology, from your research, from your, the way you're going to do it, becomes easy because you want to write something that you are interested in. If you don't have any idea what you want to write about or anything you to do, read something that you are interested in. Don't do research. Don't do development. Don't do... Don't go and tell the world what they must change if you yourself don't believe in it. Don't be, and I apologize if people are going to take your face for it, don't be an idiot. An idiot means, an uh, idiot, what is the definition of idiot? Is somebody who wants to say something. A wise man only speak and write when he has to, when he wants, when he has something to say. Not want to say something, but have something to say. Be that person. And you'll find your research, everything that you learn from here, 
everything that you do out there becomes so much easier to write a paper then or to do it and and, and, and go into a, to a presentation and talking about it will be so much different because you will talk from your heart. You will be um, convincing them because you will believe in it. If it is fact-based and it's not a lot of BS. And that's the thing I want to say about the formulating of your question. Okay? The proposal here is your proposed process. You say the research question is revised, submitted your question. This is now more for, for uh, academic purpose. You do your research question. You say, okay, I have questions. And, that, and you revise and you give it back to, to, you, to your professors or people who's on a panel. And what they do, they look at it and say, ah, oh, okay, this is a good question. It's accepted. Or, you know what? Maybe this is too wide or this is too narrow or, or this is completely far fetched. And you're going to revise it again. So then you submit it again till it has been accepted by a panel. And then from there on, then you develop your research proposal. But you're going to, when you propose, I am going to do it this way. I'm going to do the, uh, this kind of literature review. And then you do the proposal. And then you give it back to the people, to your panel again, the discuss, and they say, okay, right, accept it. And it's an accepted thing. Then you do a research design in a academic or in a school context. When it comes back into your to your life, if you have to do research in your life situation, it works nearly the same. You go to your bosses or to a panel or to, to your, your, your supervisors. Um, supervisors, good and bad. Not only the good ones, because sometimes they are the ones who going to take your proposal and make as if it is their own work. Just be, be careful of what you are doing and how people work in the real life. But in, the, in most of the time, get people together. They'll say, oh, but that's a good idea. Talk to your colleagues. Yes, it's a good idea. And then you write your proposal, and you know then your research design is there, and you can go and do your paper. Okay? Your research design has... A few parts in it. The first part will be your design strategy, the type of research you're going to do. Okay? In the, we're going to go get a little bit more in detail with that. The purpose of your research. If you just do research for the sake of research, if you just want to say, um, like all of us do, if you walk past your friend, you say to him, Good morning. Did you really mean it? Or you say, Good morning. You, well, 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 well. I don't want to say bad words now, but uh, so. No, good morning, say it, and you have a purpose of what you will say. That time you want to do it, make sure that you have time to mention, your time is there, that is the right time, that you have time available to do this research, the scope of your research, and the environment you're going to write your research in. Okay, that's going to be your design side. Within that, you have your data collection side and your sampling side. That is when you start to now to think. Oh, how am I going to collect the data? It's not going to be my own work. Is it only, am I only going to look at previous work or am I going to do some questionnaires and doing an interview and get some samples out there who's my sample going to be I just going to ask Tom Deck and Dick and Harry who's going to help me but I want to find a real purposeful sample because my purpose is not to waste my time and my, life, my, my idea is to change something because I have something that I have to say okay then if you do that you do piloting testing and you say, okay, it's working. And then you start your research. Uh, we're going to go, go I'm sorry, sorry, I'll jump a little bit. So in this case, you're looking at the purpose of the study, what, uh, the type of research. In this uh, research type, you have your qualitative or quantitative or a mix of it. Okay. You have qualitative research. You're going to go a bit. And you, I think most of you know what's qualitative. Uh, it's not that you, you're not going to go through only facts and figures. You're going to do some interviews. You're going to put in some other people's research that was done in the past, and you're going to write some of your own perspective. And you, it's, it's, it's more difficult than quantitative. To be honest, qualitative is more difficult because quantitative, you do a research and you let them only the facts and the figures speak. In qualitative, it's also behavioral economics, it's uh, or behavior, it's people's attitude, people's mental abilities, people's way of seeing things will be incorporated within your research. Quantitative is just what you see, you take that information and you drop it down on a piece of paper. A little bit more difficult, but that's more so the basic. So that is your, or you can have a mix, rather a mix than having 
only one or two if you don't, not sure about it, okay? The purpose of this study, what is a descriptive study versus in concert the findings of who, what, where, when, where, and how. You know, all the world of words in the head, okay? This descriptive studies that you can do or a casual study, your research is connected with learning why that is, how one is doing it, so it becomes more casual. Depending on what you want to put out there, what is your design? So you prepare this before you start, even start to do research, okay? Time dimension, cross-sectional studies, you study put uh, once and then repeat a snapshot of the point in time, so my time study is for now. If I say the, the effect, and then we'll come back to economics, the effect of um, China not delivering rare earth metals to the rest of the world. What will be the effect? It's rare earth metals, you use it in cell phones and computer work. So China is the biggest supplier in the world at the moment for it. Um, so that is something that is now. Tomorrow, probably this will not be true because um, Japan can also harvest it. I think Myanmar for, uh, is another country that have rare earth metals that they can use. Israel is using a different kind of technology away from the way that they were doing it. So uh, some of this information can be only for now. And let me take the words one that I don't advise actually in my mind. I'm going to mention so it out there. How Trump influenced the economy of the world. Trump is probably gone end of the year if they vote him out. But so that will be uh, time consuming because it's only for this specific time period. Okay? Or it can be something that is more open minded, it can be something that is longer, um, like um, the influence of the new airport of, of in Maldives on the economic growth of the whole Maldivian area. Uh, so that will have a longer impact of the world, okay? So that is uh, what well, you're looking at the time dimension. Uh, longitude studies, studies uh, over a period of time, so it can be a long period of time. Some studies, and I don't think we are into it, we're not uh, all scholars, I can't afford to be only studying, where people go in and say, uh, we're going into the Amazon, or we're going into Bhutan, we're going to live there with the rural people, we're going to try and catch cordyceps in the Himalayas and see uh, how the people's life changes over the next decade. So you stay for 10 years within that environment. So that can also be there, a longer time period that you use your studies for. Okay, the time dimension of your study. The scope of your study is um, how deep are you going to be? How are you going to test your hypothesis? What is your hypothesis that you're going to test? Um, is it, if, you, if you're looking at statistical studies, uh, quite quantitative, are you going to go very, 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 very deep? Or are, who is going to be your reader? Who is, and again, coming back to the purpose of your study, how you want to get your study done? Who is your study for? Okay, and then you can also have the case study side, qualitative, you're looking at case studies, um, you're looking at hypothesis. Well, that's beautiful. Um, Hypothesis testing, uh, whether or not it will work within your area. And in this case, before I even look at it, and then I'm, I'm answering your son now as well, if Maldives is too small, and we say, okay, let me look at um, the, the, the uh, Philippines or looking at the Indonesia for having more or less the same environment. Indonesia probably a little bit better than the, than the Philippines in the sense of it's also religion, it's mostly it's more connected. Um, what, what will happen if I take the, the, that area as well within my studies? So you're looking at statistics then, or, or case studies. What case studies was done then in that case for working uh, in that case, okay? Uh, so don't, you are not only bound to a certain area, but a certain area can also be in a different country or a different place, um, depending on what you are researching. What is the purpose of your research? And if your research question is very, very clear, okay? Then you're looking at the, uh, come back to qualitative research. Uh, in qualitative research, you're looking at the uh, biography, set of individuals and how they were looking at it. Uh, say you're looking at how will um, trade um, 
and they're thinking of Bhutan now. Bhutan is going to go, and they're starting to do a lot of um, trading, uh, of, of stock trading. They were looking at a, a qualitative research of the biography of, say, Warren Buffett um, or, or Steve Jobs, and um, to, to see how they would look at it, and that will be part of the qualitative research. With that, the phenomenon said describes what meaning of the lived experience the, the lived experience for several individuals about the concept of the phenomenon. So um, they will also look at how people is looking uh, at a certain situation. Again, Bhutan is very unique in in the sense that they are the only country in the world that that we thought. Now there's more countries that is following the path of not looking at GDP, gross domestic product, or GDP, gross national product of how the country is measured, but they measure the country by happiness, GNH, gross national happiness, becomes a more important part of the way of looking at. Um, the economy or at behavior of, of how people think. Okay? And according to the research, you also can have a grounded theory. We studies describe meaning of the life experiences for several individuals about the concept because we're looking at more behavior, more people oriented, more real human life, human experiences, how people think about it. Okay? Ethnography. That, that's just why I study the research examines the group observable of how they are doing, the, the patterns of behavior of a certain group. Um, the, gr the group can be the, the farmers of Bhutan, or it can be the gangsters of Bangkok, okay? So we're looking at a certain group and how they do, and with that, it becomes a case study. Qualitative research is more case studies, and you're looking at how areas and how people work in certain areas, and the research will be done. There's still questionnaires, Still interviews, but it will be more about the the human side of the research, okay? And then a case study, exploration of the balance system or a case or cases over a period of time. And as I say, you guys are so, so fortunate that you're living in a time after a big pandemic where people are so too scared to do anything. There's certain things that was never good, never great, becomes very great, like for me, I never thought in my life I would sit on a computer and teach. I would rather have a class where I can read people's faces and make jokes with the, with the, with the people that I meet and, 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 I, and I like it. And I try to make more practical experiences. So all that creates a, a, a situation where you are new and you are vulnerable in your research. It's so nice that you can have new things coming out from your research. Okay? And quantitative is, got, is very opposite. It, quickly, the two of them together. Common purpose, qualitative, discover ideas for general research objectives, quantitative, test hypothesis of specific research questions, so they just go statistics, 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 approach, observe, and interpret from the qualitative, measure, and test from the quantitative. My, my wife was doing now a quantitative research, again, as I say, on um, dementia and how the, the effect of um, meditation on it. And what she did, she had to buy a lot of um, small speakers, and let the old people put the speakers on to say, breathe in, breathe out, and how the music is playing, doing blood pressure tests, doing blood tests, and whatever the case may be, to see whether or not it will help with cognitive abilities. That is totally quantitative. Qualitative will be to say, um, how will uh, Maldivians accept the Chinese to go and live on the islands uh, that, they, that they just took? That's tongue in the cheek, bad, bad joke, okay? So what is that? So you will look and observe and interpret how the people are feeling about it, what they are going to do about it, or you can talk about how will the um, new airport in Maldives be effective for the economy of the country, then you will have both quantitative and qualitative, so it will be a mixture of the two. Research independence, research intimately involved, so in a, in a qualitative, you are involved. It is your heart, your passion. You are involved with people and what they feel. The results are, the results are very subjective. And in a qualitative paper, most of the time, the researchers are uninvolved. It's just the stats is talking for themselves. You are just an observer. And the results are just very objective. Oh, okay. Nearly finished, okay? 
and then your sample size in a, in qualitative the sample size is often a natural setting. What happened within the whole nature of that area? And quantitative will be large samples, so we generalize results. We will take a sample size that is relatively acceptable for whatever your research question will be. Okay, data collection is a very interesting part. When you look at the data collection, um, you have two parts there. You have the observation approach, where you're looking at behavior of the people, the non behavior of people, if people are uh, where uh, processes are fixed, a commutative approach. You have a personal interviews with people, phone interviews, um, phone interviews. Lately, we have uh, Facebook inter Facebook. People send you things on Facebook or Google. That's, oh, okay, last one, baby. Okay. Sorry, students. Last one, thank you, my baby. That you so wait with me, okay? So uh, now people use Google to make interviews and you send interview papers to the friends and make sure that they, they apply it or they, they fill it in for you. And um, I buy from a, a company from, from, I think they are from uh, Singapore called Lazada that they do online. And every day I have some, there are some personal questions, there are some interviews. Do you want it this way? Do you want it that way? So it's the whole time um, different ways of getting answers on how you can improve yourself. Remember, any research that you are doing is not to, to um, stay as status quo. You want to see if status quo is working or whether or not we can actually improve it. Coming back to my cell phone thing that I told you back in the day. If nobody did research and nobody asked questions about that, the old phones would have died already and we still would have a handful saying. But people ask, what do you want? Eventually, the phones had ended up, and I still don't know why, and I think I bought this crappy phone. Uh, three cameras in the back. I don't know who wants three cameras in the back, but that is what people were requiring. So that was the research said, three cameras. And phones came up with three cameras in the back and a camera in the front. But all this happened due to research that was done. And interviews, statistics, everything together. But as the purpose was clear what they want to do, that, that is how I want you to look at your research in the future as well. The sampling design is very easy. It's a very, um, you can have a convenient samples and purposeful samples. All of this is on the slides. I think you will get the whole of the slides as well. Or a probability sample. That is, if you had stats, you have a simple random sample or complex random sample, or systematic samples, cluster, stratified samples. All these ways is ways for you just to make sure that it's not your opinion that you want to put in the paper. The more and the bigger your sample size um, in a certain area, the more uh, believing it can be for me to read your paper. You say, yes, I believe that um, the Chinese must get out of the uh, South China Seas. And uh, I look at your sample size. And the sample size is five uh, of your friends that was fishermen in the area. Then, am I going to believe in your sample? No. And I'm going to believe in your research? No. So your research will be a lot of nonsense. So make sure that your sample size connect to make sure that they, not to prove who you are, but to prove whatever you are going to put out there that it must be believable. It is the facts and the figures that is counting and stating. I'm going to take 10 more minutes of you. Sorry, Susan, I'm going to take like later. I know all of us are working. But um, I hope you find it interesting. Or if you leave, I'm going to have no problem. Okay. Simple random uh, is very easy. I, I think it's on here that advantages is, is ultimate. It's dialing something. You you put the numbers here. Pop. Okay. You choose that, choose that, choose that. And, or you take the telephone dictionary in the old days. Or you just take cell phone names. And you say, okay, all the numbers has end with an 8. I'm going to use that, and that is how Sindhamarapa works. And then the advantage is you can have too much of population that you don't need. Systematic is if you go systematically through the way that you look at it, the stratified is just you, um, you're looking at certain strata in a certain area, way of you looking at the sampling design. I'm not going to do it. I'm, as I said, I'm not going to go through it very in detail. Cluster samples is also your, your you, you, you sort your people into clusters and certain groups. Say, um, uh, let me think of 
Africa. Sorry, I use Africa because it's the only one I can think quickly of. We're in a country like South Africa, they have over 50 different uh, ethnic groups. So you will cluster the different ethnic groups together in, in a different group. So you, put, you divide your population like that. If, it's not, if you um, don't want to do it, you can do it between Asia, uh, African, white, or whatever the case may be. So you, you cluster them together. But with that, you can also have a problem of lower statistical efficiency because uh, people will be more homogeneous than heterogeneous. And that can be a problem eventually. A double uh, means you, your process includes collecting data from a sample using previous defined techniques. You're looking at what other people did, and you're doing the same. If, if you're doing your literature review and say, you know, you're looking at how many um, monkeys is breaking down the, the government offices in, in Punta, uh, Bunta, in one of the cities in um, uh, Bhutan, then you, you, you say, okay, what was previous research? Okay, there was previous research, so I use the same way of looking at my research. I'm not going to do all, everything over. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. So there is different ways that you're looking at your sampling design. Okay. After that, you do a pilot testing. Pilot testing means you detect your weakness in design. You check, is my design, is this what I'm going to do? Is there any weaknesses? Is there things that I miss out of it? Is there things that I can I can improve? Is the service as big that the complete pilot testing may be carried and detect weakness and all of those? If, if the server is too big, then it can be too big. Uh, a pilot testing may be carried out restricting to data collecting activities only. You can make your pilot test to test only the areas where you think there can be a weak link. Okay. And now I don't have people in my class. Okay. So just imagine you are holding, I'm holding a person in my left hand and I'm holding a person in my right hand. And my right hand is my boy and I'm holding him by the pinky. No, I'm holding him by my arm. Let's make strong arm, strong arm. Okay. And this guy next to me here, I hold him by the pinky. Where and this is now a chain. We create a chain. Where is the strongest point in this chain? Let me ask somebody. Anybody answer me. Where is the strongest point? This person comes by the pinky or my boy holds him with my arm? What point is the strongest point? I think it would be the arm, right? Okay, thank you for the answer. Wrong. Oh. <laughs> no, it's a good, a good answer. It's wrong because you know what? Everybody answers the same. But not where I hold my boy strongly. My chain breaks if my weakest point breaks. Then the chain will not be strong. So my, my whole strength, strength of my chain is, is um, piloting, is, is driven by my weakest point. So in your pilot test, you check the weakest point. You check again at your weakest point where you think the weakest points will be in your test that you're going to do when you do the, the complete test. Good answer. Thank you for involving you, being involved in the class. Okay, so, so by doing that, remember, students, research is not cheap. Research is costly. If, but, but Professor, it's not going to cost me money. Yes, it's going to cost you money because it's costing your time. It's costing your opportunity cost. You could have done something else in the time you're doing your research. And time is a very, very scarce resource. Tell them, ask me, look here, that's his time. And I thought yesterday I felt like a younger than you guys. Had. So um, time is money. Time is a resource that you can't waste. So make sure that you do this pilot testing to scratch other things where the weakest points are and you spend more time there check if that's going to work and then the stronger points will be carried stronger if you, if you strengthen your weaker point then you maybe the arm will be become the stronger the weaker point but it depends so that will be for you power testing very important okay then you then you're looking at your hypothesis testing your hypothesis testing is very easy you're looking at your uh, so you, let me go you do your formulate your preliminary hypothesis. What you think will happen from your research question. Okay. Then you have the analysis planning. You're looking at what I'm going to plan from your research design. You define your hypothesis. Hypothesis one will be um, Aiden is a donkey. Yeah. Number two will be Aiden is a soldier. Number three will be 
and this is grandpa's everything in his life. Okay, so then you're going to test them. Yeah, he's, he's long, but he's not a donkey, so that hypothesis will not work against him, so it's not good. Um, he's a soldier, yes, only if he's not in his pajamas, you walk with soldier clothes on the whole day. But, but he's his grandpa's everything. So uh, that is a hypothesis. So you'll define your hypothesis by your redesign. And then you, because of the data that you evaluate, you, you don't know. Maybe I, after the class, I hit him and kick him and do everything. So you will have to research that to find out whether or not this hypothesis is good. Hypothesis question is easy because if you do your hypothesis and your data analysis, that will create for you your hypothesis eventually. Okay? The characteristics of a sound treatment is, number one, is the validity. I spoke about it many times. The data is able to be generalized across persons. It, it must be external val valid. It must be valid all over. It has internal validity. Okay? The way that you use it, it is valid enough. Number two, it's reliable. It's consistent. It has a consistency through it. So the work is reliable. Students, if you do research in, in the workplace or at a school or wherever you are, or at a university or a college, and you lie, that reliability is gone, and with it, your name. So a good research is also always reliable, okay, when you're looking at your design. So asking three people from the Philippines, a fishermen, if the Chinese is, is good to be in the ocean, no, you're going to have a different answer from asking three Chinese in, Be in Beijing if it will be a good idea, okay? So that will also be bad. So to have more people that's involved within an area to do the research, bring it in, reliable. Also, you're looking at the cluster who will be involved within that. It doesn't help to ask the cleaner of the streets whether or not the Chinese islands is a good thing or not because he will not have an idea when it will not affect him personally. So you will not have that. I, that is some that information will not help. Okay. Number three with, with sound research, the practicality. First of all, I actually I want to bring it into Pesla. I think we have recorded on a few economically some some trade off between uh, the ideal research project and the budget. You must know how much money you use for your research. That money, as I say, is also your time. No, I'm just going to write about it. So I'm going to read it. Um, if it's for, for, for a project at the university or the college, so, ah, two days before my research, I'm just going to write something. It's not going to be worth your while. You're going to you waste your time and your money in that effort. But you spend it over a certain period of time to plan is more than 90% or 80%. 80% of your work is done, is already complete if you have a good plan. So you have practicality economically, if you're going to make, take money, if you have to go out and do research and interview people or send out a paper, make sure that it's invo involvement. Okay. Number two, it is convenience. The practicality is also con convenient um, in the sense that it's easy to, to administer and it's easy to complete the questionnaire and the questionnaire correctly. So... You don't ask them leading questions. You don't ask them questions. If you do a questionnaire, you don't ask them questions where they have to write sentences. You ask them questions and then, and then you bring in an I, I, I like a, a thing we call the linker scale, where you, have, where you gave them from a one to a five, where they just have to fill in the little dots. You say, ah, oh, I understand the question. The English that is in the paper is easy enough. And if it's like in, Say in, I, I'm just going for which country, say uh, Sri Lanka, uh, okay, Sri Lanka people's English is good, but not, not only to, to, if you have a question in English, to put that same question to, to, to translate it back into to the local dialect or the local language to make it easy for them to understand what you want to ask. Because you want to have a reliable and a sound and a practical questionnaire, question, uh, research paper. So then you can even ask them in, the, in their own language with the English that they say, if you're going to write it, okay? So it must be convenient, easy to answer. If they ask me, uh, write a piece of, um, again, Lazada. How is the driver? I say, good. 
Oh, excellent. So I say, so say good. Why is he good? Pop, skip the question. I don't even answer it. I don't want to start writing little questions. Okay. Um, the same happened when you when you interview people. It is found, and that's very, very, very interesting. If I ask you now, um, without seeing me, okay, write a report on what you think of my child. Okay. You're all going to write something. Maybe you're going to say, ah, he's a short donkey, or he's a monkey, or he's, he's, a, he's, he's, he's not so bad, he's a handsome boy, whatever the case may be. But he's a little naughty shit. Somebody will write that. But now, that's without me seeing you. But now, if I take him in front of you and say, okay, guys, let me read what you said about him. Your answer is going to change. Because now you are face to face confronted with the boy who's going to say, what did you say about me? Okay. So make sure that you don't, when you do a questionnaire paper, that you don't have that question. That you, that you don't, that the questions will be easy and comfortable for them to answer in front or behind you. That will be honest enough to answer what you ask. Okay. And the last one is the interpretability. It must be easy to, 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 it must be relevant to the person who's writing it and the designer of the question. Um, we found it many times. And, I, and if you're looking at form design or you're looking at some questions, and the question will be, uh, let me say, let me take this. One. What do you think about this paper? And people say, oh, no. and I give him some questions to write about it. Uh, but eventually, I want to ask uh, my, my uh, and then on this question paper, I ask you, how old are you? Where are you from? Uh, what is your passport number? What languages can you speak? What, and then, what do you think about this paper? None of the above, none of the other questions is relevant. What is age? Maybe because people will say, "Oh, okay, I'm scared." Okay, or or my my uh, my sexuality, I'm male or female, or something in between, and that can be probably have an effect. But where you from, and um, what car you drive, or what color you like, that is questions that will be irrelative. And and if you find many of the forms that we fill in, or what's your passport number, will have nothing to do with it. And that is things that must not, it's not practical because it has no e effect on the outcome of your paper. If you need to have age, or if you need to know that because you're breathing in that specific cluster, no problem. If you need to have, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? I don't want to say uh, sexu sexuality, or, or um, I don't want to say gender because we have now four or five or six or seven genders. I don't know how many genders we have now anymore. But so all of that questions will have a personal problem for, for me as, an, uh, as, a, as a questionnaire. If, if they ask me, for instance, and I just use this example, and they want to ask me if um, black lives matter. Got a question. Black lives matter. Yes or no? And I answer, for instance, I said, uh, if I answer yes, Black Lives Matter, my students who is black or Asian or has black friends will say, wow, great. But now what happened with my students that does not like that? I know it's bad. I just try to make a bad example. But so um, it puts me into a, in, in, a, in a very bad situation. And it does put me in a situation in many times because for me, nobody knows what is my religion. And many people say, ah, oh, you are white, you must be Christian. No, I'm not. That I can say for a fact. But so people say, oh, but what, what, what religion? It has nothing to do because I love everybody. I love some Christians as well. I think my neighbor are Christians. So I have nothing but what I want to say, don't judge a group because it's a white, it's a European, it must be in a certain religion. And I don't want to talk religion, but that is what I want to give you an example of be careful of what kind of questions, how you bring your questions in for your sound research. That must be practical. You want answers on a certain thing. 
if it's religious orientated yes no problem but if it's about what color ice cream do you like religion plays no role hopefully not okay so um, be careful of what and that is me i want to actually really kind of end with this to say the characteristic of a good sound research have validity it's reliable and it's, and it's practical that you are that you're looking at the reason that we can always look at and that is what i want to uh, i want to say about our paper and i know i saved much of your time and over the time period and if there's any question please answer ask me quickly i will no problem No questions? Then I want to thank you for your evening and for the sorry I take you a half an hour over time. Uh, no questions from me. Um, I think, but I think the half an hour was well worth it. You answered quite a lot of things that uh, I had uh, in, in questions in your slides and in your explanation as well. So thank you for that. Thank you very much, Hassan. I hope I see you in real life one of these days. Yep. Looking forward to that day. Yes, because we, we can walk there at, at, at Maldives. You know what place is me, the nicest place in Maldives? Close to the fish market in Mali, where you walk and you can see the water, and you can see the fish swimming there in, in the ocean. It's so beautiful, so clear. I love that place. Yeah. Thank you very much. If there's no questions, uh, Da, I'm, I'm finished. If there's anything more from your side. Yes, uh, thank you. Anyone have any other questions? Otherwise, we'll call it at night. Uh, okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Guys. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful Thank you. things. Yes. Thank have you. Very a, have a good night and take good care. Night, good night, Good night, Good night, good night. Good night. Good night everybody. Good night, good night. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Jan. I know your kid has been waiting there for a long time. Thank you. <laughs> John is past midnight. Uh, yeah. Guys, getting close yeah. to midnight. Guys, you guys deserve uh, rest now. Yes, it's uh, 12.30, uh, midnight. <laughs> good night. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Yes. Good night. Bye-bye. Yeah.